I'm Kyle Shepard. We're here at the Louisville Zoo, uh, per usual, on Thursdays at 11. We're here today in the Colobus Crossings exhibit, uh, and we've got some fun enrichment for them today. So enrichment is just something that stimulates them or engages them. Sometimes it can bring out some natural foraging behavior, as in the terms of a food puzzle, and sometimes it's as simple as just us being in a space that maybe they haven't seen us in a while. So that's what we're going to do today. We've got educators Fred and Katie. We've got some outreach animals. We've got Michelle Wise, if she sticks around, one of the keepers for the colobus. And of course, the colobus. Welcome. Oh, oh, oh. And don't forget to type your questions in the comment section. I'll feed them to them and we'll get them answered for you. Take care. shot he just jumped got excited hey Michelle could yes. you could you kind of chime in and talk about why this might be enriching for them so these are animals that these guys don't normally see and a lot of times when these guys see something that's new to them even if it's a new animal or when they were putting up all the lanterns around the zoo having those move through here was really uh, a curious event for them. So they would jump around a little bit, but you could definitely see them watching and uh, checking out what's going on. And there was some, a, a little bit of alarm calling, but nothing nothing really major. Um, once they saw that nothing was going to hurt them, they just watched it and uh, were really curious by all that. Okay. Want to ride around? Oh, are we going to? All right. So this is oh, Sheldon this is right here. Oh, Sheldon, that's pretty really curious. Oh, not too So we're gonna let Gordo hang out on the ground for a little bit. We'll see. He might stretch up to the window. I'm not sure if he's that long. I think he's too a little bit too short. Oh, he might be. But he can stretch out pretty far. And these col the colobus can still see him when they look down at the ground. So we'll see what happens there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So don't forget if you have any questions to put them in the uh, comment box for either about the ferret, about enrichment, or about the products. So 
So this is also a new environment for Gordo, so he's <laughs> checking everything out, obviously. We're all, just so you know, we're all here dancing around each other every time one moves the other. Uh, we move to get into a six feet stance, of course. So let's see what the colleagues are doing. So he's, he's watching, watching. So what are these colleagues names, Michelle? So we have Rodney, and you guys can see Rodney, he has blue on his tail. Let me see, let's show that blue back there. See that blue and tail since, back there? Since we're trying to keep everybody safe and healthy, we split our Gorilla Forest team, as all the other teams out of the zoo, into two separate teams. And to give us a little bit of a helping hand, somebody that's not normally on our team came up to help us um, take care of these monkeys for the past few weeks, and if you're not familiar with how this monkeys, sometimes they can be hard to tell apart, which is why we marked Rodney's tail so that you can definitely tell him apart. The three brothers, Rodney is the dad to these three brothers, um, and the, the brothers are a little bit easier to tell apart. Um, <laughs> He's watching. Got their yeah. face in the top of their heads, so. Uh, but Rudy was for sure one that we wanted to mark, so that's why he has blue on his tail. <laughs> Leonard is really interested he in, is, in this is watching. Um, and Raj is, but he's kind of staying back a little <laughs> bit. He's like, I'm not so sure about this. Um, Leonard definitely is, is the most interested. Sheldon is interested, but he's uh, not choosing to stop eating. He's not so interested that he's not going to eat at all. And then Freddie's watching from afar back there. All right, the Michelle, I have idea. a question for you. Yes. So how do you tell these guys apart, these colobus? Colobus can be tricky. When we first got them, um, there was a, they came to us from Columbus, and there was a keeper that came with them and really worked with us for a few days on understanding their, their defining characteristics. Raj, who's up on the milk crate up here, is the baby. We call him the baby. He's not a baby anymore. He's five. But um, he's the easiest to tell apart. So on the top of his head, when a colobus become male, becomes an adult especially, they get these cute kind of domes. They kind of sort of look like Mickey Mouse ears. They're not quite that big, though. But he doesn't really have those well-defined just yet. And his face is smaller. Uh, Leonard, who's sitting right here, he's the most interested in the ferret today, um, kind of has a little more of a flat top look to his head. Um, and he also has a little bit of an unkempt spot on his back that, that makes it pretty easy for him to check the ferret. Define him. <laughs> and then Sheldon, actually his ears kind of bend out a little bit. So it's kind of easy to tell him from that. But you don't see him every day, it becomes hard to not be able to tell who's who. And they do sometimes all look alike, if you don't know um, a little bit about what defines each one of them and makes them different and unique. And if Dad didn't have the blue tail today, how would we? So if Dad didn't have the blue tail, he and Sheldon look very similar to each other. So Rudy's there and Sheldon is there, eating some collard greens there. Um, about the only way to tell those two apart is really the ears are the easiest way. But Sheldon's ears kind of sticking out a little bit more. Um, Rodney, it looks a little bit older. He's got his eyebrows kind of stick out further. Um, but that can be a little bit harder to tell um, from a distance. Okay. So. Jordan has a question. How I think he's talking about Gordo the ferret. How old is Gordo? Gordo's a, just over a year old. He's about a year and two months. So he's pretty young. He's a little. So Michelle, we've got a couple other animals in this exhibit too. You can see the behind the scenes area over here, but the Schmitz are outside. You want to talk about those for a second? So we do have some Schmitz red tail monkeys as well. Uh, we have uh, one uh, boy. Uh, on mom, and then two sisters, Indy and Chi Chi, and they're pretty little when you compare them to Colobus. They actually look really little compared to the Colobus. Um, and they, we rotate the two groups up here. Um, so some days 
Um, you'll see the colobus out, and other days you'll see the, the red-tailed monkeys outside. Um, but if you come inside in here to this day room that we're lucky enough to have, um, you can see the other group that's not outside in the exhibit. And if it's super hot outside, we'll put the colobus monkeys outside in the early morning, like in the summer in July and August when it's really hot. And then uh, what we'll do is in the afternoon, we'll bring the colobus inside and put the red tails out. The colobus tend to not handle the heat real well. So, and the Schmitz are a little bit um, more tolerant of that. So we'll switch the groups up. So you can see some of them inside and outside. I have a few questions about the colobus and what they eat real quick. Okay. What do they eat? The colobus get, so they're all herbivore. They get a whole lot of um, leafy greens. Today is collard greens, and then they get a vegetable every day. Today is green peppers. Um, they get a specially formulated primate biscuit called a leaf eater biscuit. And then they get browse every day. Today they got beach. Beach doesn't seem to be a real big hit right now. Um, they'll eat it later when everything else that they like is gone. But that's what they get every single day. Excellent. A uh, couple more questions, and then we'll move on to our next guest star animal for the colobus here. Um, Nisha would like to know why do they have long hair on their backs? And where do they originate from? So these guys are African, kind of the central part of Africa. Um, their fur is just an adaptation for some reason they got. I'm not really sure why they have fur like they do, but I do know that it was a real popular thing in some costumes. Um, now they can make artificial fur, which is really good, but these guys used to be hunted for their fur for the costumes and hats and headdresses and things like that. They're a central African. All right, Fred, you want to bring our next special guest in and see if they uh, okay. are interested in, in uh, this special friend? Oh, uh, 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 oh, oh. So they jumped back, for those of you who didn't see it, sorry. For this, we have yes. our have ball python. They're not thrilled. <laughs> They're not thrilled with that one. I think I've seen a lot of humans react, my human friends react this way a little bit too. They might see this as a type of predator. They might be able to get like a, a young one, maybe. Yeah. They, they've all gone yeah, mm -hmm. I might to be near each other. Set him on the table here. Is see. that, since they're near each other, would that be common if a predator approached them in the room at well? <laughs> Probably, yeah. That could potentially be a threat, I would think. And would they gather like they have? Like they all kind of gather together for a second? They do. They do live in social groups. And part mm -hmm. of that is for obviously protection, um, and you see they're kind of all a little bit closer together, <laughs> and uh, backing mm -hmm. further and further away from, they sure are. from the snake. Who, so, who is the snake, Fred? We have Stevie here, the ball python. Stevie's made quite an impression yeah. on our top of this. Right? They're like, uh, I don't know about this character here. <laughs> and Stevie's quite active. Usually he's just kind of sitting around, but he's moving around and giving them a show. All right, so Miss Tammy from the Lift Up Louisville page has a question about, um, well, it's just a rehash of where they're uh, native from. The so Central Africa is, is where colobus are native to. Kind of the western part of Tanzania, mm -hmm. Kenya, Uganda, Rwanda, Zaire, Central Republic, Congo. <clears throat> I like oh, somebody's getting brave. Riley, just coming over. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, okay, maybe not, not. Maybe not quite. Maybe, so I, maybe I'll bring him over here and see if he'll come a little closer. If he's not right in their face. So, just to give you some perspective, Fred is yeah. on the left side of the exhibit, and they are all the way on the right. <laughs> so this snake is Western Africa too. This isn't one that they would more likely come into contact with, but snakes are pretty universal. So there are snakes where they come from. Hey, Mr. Fred, I got a comment here I just wanted to make um, note of. Mm -hmm. I don't want anyone to think that we're teasing our monkeys. We are actually, this is part of an enrichment um, to see how they engage. And even just us being in here when guests are no, not here right now is enriching for them. And which leads us to our next question basically. Michelle, we get this a lot. Do the animals miss people? They do. They do. They, even though a lot of times it'll look like they're not really paying attention to a whole lot of people coming in, um, they definitely do miss and they're more um, alert 
work to movement outside, whereas if there were a lot of people here moving about all the time, they wouldn't pay as much attention. But now when these doors open or the Gorilla Force Sanctuary doors open and people walk through, it definitely gets their attention a lot more than it normally does. So they do miss having, having you guys out here and around them. I have a question for uh, Stevie. <laughs> uh, Six-year-old Coleman would like to know how long Stevie's sleep will get. Oh, he's probably about full grown here. They only get to be about five or six feet in length. That's about as much. Stevie, if we stretched him out, he's probably four and a half feet, I'd say, right around in that area. But he only weighs about five pounds or so. He's not very heavy, three to five pounds. He is a relatively small snake as far as constrictor goes. Yeah. And did you say his age? I didn't. I don't know his age. I would guess somewhere around 10 or 12 would be my guess, but yeah. it might be older than that. I he's been here since he, I've been here. Yeah, he's definitely been here with us at the zoo for a while, and most of our reptiles we get as adults, so we aren't always sure how old they are. We can tell you things like how long they've been at the zoo, mm -hmm. but we don't necessarily know how old they are. But a lot of reptiles, like ball pythons, can live a pretty long time. So Stevie could be anywhere from 15 to 30, and we wouldn't really be sure. You get a lot of colobus faces making sure they know where the, the <laughs> no, snake is. is. Yeah, I think it's very interesting for them. Something they don't see every day, and we kind of take advantage of this time when, you know, normally we would have all of you guests here, but... It's a good time to let animals see each other a little bit, and it's uh, interesting for all involved, I think, for them to be able to see something else happening. It's probably the first time they've had a snake in history. I would say yes. <laughs> Ms. Michelle, I have a question for you. Um, what, yes. what would a natural predator be for our colleagues friends here? Uh, humans <laughs> are a big one. I know um, the that the uh, brown hawk eagle yeah, I was gonna say, hawk is a eagles. really big one. That's probably their main one. Yeah. The other one that's interesting too, one of their predators is also a chimpanzee. They've yeah. been known to hunt them before, which is, I thought, very interesting. And they didn't think they did for a long time, but it was finally documented. All right, so Miss Katie's gonna bring Gordo back out. Let's we'll see if we can. Gordo wanted to take a little break. He got tired, but now he's back. And he backed up on Chewy yeah. as well. Too excited for the table. I'm kind of worried he's going to fall right off you. Yeah. So let's talk about Gordo. He's a domestic ferret. Yes. yes. Gordo is a domestic ferret. Um, they are, like I said, they're musculids. Oh, your mask. Oh, oh sorry. Whoops. Um, so they're part of the weasel family. We're going to put him on the floor because he's ready to run a little bit. So they are related to um, pole cats, to like pine martens, black-footed ferrets, even animals like otters are part of the weasel family. <laughs> Should have painted my toenails. <laughs> yeah. So domestic ferrets get that name because people do keep them as pets. But I wouldn't recommend it. They do kind of smell. Uh, they communicate through scent. So even domestic ferrets have pretty, pretty strong odor with some intense scent glands. And they are nocturnal, so they'll keep you up at night running around. They love to explore. You can see Gordo running around. He's going to duck back in maybe or go see Fred. How much of this, what they're thinking about him. So, how does he differ from our black footed ferrets who are our conservation, uh, signature conservation? Um, I mean, I think domestic ferrets tend to be a little bit smaller. They're definitely not as aggressive. Black footed ferrets do not interact with humans as a part of their natural life, whereas domestic ferrets do. I mean, you might see Gordo or Emma if they come back another week, do a little play biting, like if you've got a puppy or a kitten at home when they do some play biting. But they're just kind of testing it out. They're not really going to try and attack us. 
think of them as like distant cousins of the black Fed pair. They're, they're pretty closely related. Yeah, and they will look similar. Like Gordo has got that darker color and he's got kind of a mask on his face, if you guys saw that earlier, which is very similar to the way that black-footed fairies look. But they don't always look like that. Uh, previous ferrets we've had here at the zoo have been all white or kind of a blonde color. They've got all different sorts of patterns and colors. Cute little faces. <laughs> yeah. I was gonna see if he comes up here. Let's see. Oh nope, he jumped back. Okay, so it's about 11:20. Uh, if you have any last-minute questions, go ahead and give it to us. We'd be glad to answer any questions about our colobus friends, our Schmidt red tail, our red, our Schmidt red tail friends, our ferret friends, or our snake friends. I'll say one little tidbit about the colobus that makes them unique is a. Uh, they don't really have thumbs. They, one of the only monkeys that, that do that, they, their, their fingers are kind of a line. They, they make more of a hook, and they kind of swing through the trees like that. So he's able to be very, very good in the trees to be able to move through that. But that's a pretty unique trait when you get to look close in their hands. They don't have those thumbs on there. Oh, he's coming. Oh. oh. <laughs> So this is a question I always like to ask Michelle. Um, are there any things that we can do in our everyday lives who, uh, that will help these colorless friends? So one big thing is recycle your small electronics and your cell phones. EcoCell is a big uh, recycling uh, center here in, in Louisville that you can, uh, you can bring your cell phones and small electronic devices here to the zoo. Um, habitat destruction is a huge crisis for any African species right now. They'll, they, uh, they will uh, <clears throat> take out large uh, pockets of forest, um, which completely disturbs or um, kills the wildlife. Um, that puts them in the bushmeat trade, the pet trade. Um, just the habitat destruction in general is really disruptive to these guys. So any, any of that stuff you can do, um, try to use um, sustainable palm oil. It's another big reason they uh, clear the forest is to farm uh, palm for palm oil. Um, so that is also, but for the small electronics and stuff, um, coal pan mining is a big thing in Central Africa. Um, and they do have to, to clear forests and, and habitats to be able to mine for that as well, which makes recycling all the more important for, for all that. Yeah. We, have, we have one final question coming in from Kimberly, I'm sorry, Lily, who's uh, seven. Seven-year-old Lily really wants to know why the colobus might be afraid of the ferrets. It's no, something they've never seen before. A lot of times with animals, and you can sometimes see this with your dogs and cats, when it's a new situation for them, they're going to a lot of times exercise caution rather than to be curious. You can see either way, the, the colobus were very curious about the ferret and they were fairly close, but once the snake came out, it was a different story. Um, but that's just kind of an interesting thing. It can go either way. Fight or flight is kind of what we, what we call that. They'll either going to come towards it and, and look at it, not necessarily fight it, but have a more calm curiosity about it, or they're going to just run from it. Anybody else have anything last minute to add before we wrap up? Uh, that was really fun. Pretty <laughs> cool. <laughs> I like seeing how they interact with each other and be able to see it. That was really fun. That was fun. Thank you. Well, thanks for watching Lift Up Blue. We're also live on our Facebook page. So thank you guys for watching as well. Uh, join us tomorrow at the Global Zoo Facebook page for Fitz Friday at 2 p.m. You can join us there uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Fridays at 2. Uh, for different topics that we have live at 2 on Facebook Live. We, we take your questions there. And then Thursdays, of course, here at the Lift Up Global page and on our Facebook page at 11. Uh, we miss you guys. We look forward to the day we can reopen and see your smiling faces. Until then, stay well, social distance, uh, and wash your hands and all that good stuff. And, and uh, we'll see you soon. Take care. <laughs>